Hi again, this is Don on YouTube. I'm, uh, I'm reviewing some books I've read in the past few months uh, again. Just as a way to sort of remember what I've read before, before it uh, dissipates in my uh, memory. So today we're going to be looking at two books by Fred Hoyle or as he's called, Sir Fred Hoyle. Uh, the first book is called Ice, Ultimate Human Catastrophe. And uh, this was published in 1981. The second book is also by Fred and Chandra uh, Wickram Ramasing. Uh, this is a theory of cosmic creationism, evolution in space. Uh, this one was also published in the same year, 1981. Not sure which book came out first, but uh, uh, For some reason, uh, on the title page here, it gives the, the second author's name is N.C. Uh, Wick Ram, Rama Singh. So, uh, C, the middle C must be Chandra, but I don't know what the N stands for. So let's start. Uh, these are going to be like impressions of the book, because I'm not going to sit here and page through it and try to remember everything I read a few months ago. Uh, but we'll start with the, the uh, ice book first. Basically, he's talking about what what is the cause of an ice age, which back in 1981, I suppose, was a hot topic. But now, everybody, I think, is pretty much in agreement that... Uh, projectiles from space, like a meteorite or a comet or something, could uh, trigger an ice age. Uh, so I think in the beginning he goes through different possibilities of what would cause an ice age. And then it's at a later point in the book, he, after he's debunked all the other theories, he, he comes up with the the catastrophic, uh, catastrophic, catastrophic viewpoint of the, you know, the, the uh, meteorites or whatever, or uh, asteroids or something colliding with the Earth. So <clears throat> the deal with an ice age is that even after a collision takes place, it would take about 10 years uh, uh, hum humans could live for 10 years potentially uh, if they had if they had a stored source of food because with the dust in the air from the collision you know the whatever hit the earth powderized into dust it would block block the sun. That's what causes. That's the uh, primary cause of an ice age. Is there's no sun sunlight getting through. But the thing is, the oceans still have some heat or whatever, so the planet wouldn't be completely uh, unsustainable for for about 10 years, according to Hoyle. So, the only way to undo <laughs> the effects that uh, lead to an ice age would be to have another uh, object made of... Uh, iron, uh, reflective metal, 
so that the sun's rays would, would uh, my understanding is that with, with this uh, iron in the atmosphere, it would uh, cause the other uh, dust to fall to the earth. So then gradually the earth would warm up again. So how, so not only does Hoyle give us the reason for uh, or the cause of an ice age, but he also tells us how we could, with that knowledge, that we could prevent it from occurring. Uh, the idea behind that is that glaciers, when they melt, you know, like up on the north, in the, in the uh, northern regions up by the pole, that has melted when it breaks off from the ice sheet or whatever, the glacier, whatever you want to call it, then that water descends down to the bottom of the ocean because heat rises and the cold, the colder water descends. And so he's, what he's saying is you could pump out over a vast period of time, like about, it would take about 2,000 years and make the oceans warmer. So even if, uh, if something did strike the earth, there would be no ice age because the, the oceans would be warm enough to sustain life. So that's it in a nutshell. Uh, I could probably cover it better than that, but I think uh, be, uh, criticizing or being critical of what he's saying is not so much arguing with the science of it, but you know, exploration is probably takes precedence over prevention. Uh, it'd probably be wiser to spend our resources on uh, colonizing another planet in the solar system or, you know, somewhere, up, uh, a moon or somewhere else, because the Earth probably doesn't have a sufficient lifespan to to try to keep it going forever, especially with, with the in, increase in population that's occurring. And also, the human activity, you know, there's, there's a probably a bigger probability of an uh, atom bomb or something being exploded by humans than there is of uh, the immediate concern of a, a meteorite or something hitting the earth. But that's one of the interesting aspects of the book is Hoyle gives the probability that there will be a meteorite strike during your lifetime. It's, it's greater. <laughs> it's a greater possibility than many other hazards like getting hit by a car or something. So there is something to be concerned about, but at the same time, I think, you know, if we spent all, all the funds on warming up the ocean, which, which wouldn't be successful for, you know, like, I think he, I think he said 2000 years of pumping the water from the bottom to the surface before we'd be safe from a meteorite strike as far as the end of the world or whatever. But even with the meteorite strike, 
there would be 10 years. So in the next video, I'm going to discuss the, the other book, uh, Evolution from Space. Uh, I think that's talking about panspermia, which is actually uh, Francis Crick, one of the uh, co discoverers of DNA, which I think Watson stole it from from a female, as I recall. So whether that's true that they discovered DNA is questionable, but uh, so we'll get into that in the next video. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.